The term male gaze has gained traction in the past few years. Its meaning often reduced on social media like TikTok and Twitter to simply refer to women dressing feminine and being submissive. While female submission is a crucial component of the male gaze, the conventions go much deeper. Laura Mulvey was the one to coin the phrase in her 1975 essay, Visual Pleasure and Narrative Cinema, drawing on Freudian interpretations of gender and sexuality to expose the perverted lens of the Hollywood film industry. The male gaze has multiple essential components that all revolve around visual pleasure from a heterosexual man's perspective. According to Laura Mulvey, women's bodies are seen by men as objects that give pleasure through voyeuristic and fetishistic forms of scopophilia, the pleasure of looking. The woman displayed on screen functions both as an erotic object for the spectator within the auditorium and as an erotic object for the characters within the screen story. When it comes to the depictions of men and women in popular media, Mulvey's original work follows Freud in identifying activity and agency with masculinity and passivity and objectification with femininity. Not only is the female figure valued in the industry, Hollywood cinematic codes like narrative, staging, camera work, and editing embed the male gaze into the infrastructure of cinema itself, posing women as nothing more than erotic objects to be looked at. According to Mulvey, cinema constructs the perspective of the viewer through its editing of the three looks, the camera, the character, and the audience. The first look is the gaze of the camera itself which is controlled by the director and cinematographer and has to do with the framing of images and selecting of shots. The second look is the gaze of the character within the film, particularly of the male protagonist, who looks at women in a way that is sexualized and voyeuristic and reinforces the idea that women are only there to be looked at. The third look is the gaze of the spectator, or the viewer of the film, and this is shaped by the first two looks, as the camera and the characters within the film construct the viewer's perspective. This editing style forces audiences of any gender to identify with the male protagonist's exploitative gaze. This means that ultimately, the male gaze limits the possibilities for female spectators to imagine themselves with a sense of agency and escape identifying themselves as passive objects. At base, Moldy identifies a need to master and control its object as a compulsory aspect of the male gaze. Kelly Oliver expands on this disturbing fact in her article, The Male Gaze is More Relevant and More Dangerous Than Ever. Oliver's article draws on Moldy's essay, specifically highlighting the violent manifestations of the male gaze on social media. After commenting directly on Moldy's work and its application in the film industry, Oliver condemns social media as being fundamentally born out of the male gaze and its concomitant symptomology. Oliver specifically explores the problematic origins of the popular social media sites Facebook, Snapchat, and Tinder. Mark Zuckerberg's original intention for Facebook was to post pictures of girls for his college buddies to rate and berate women. Evan Spiegel, the inventor of Snapchat, sent messages during his college days referring to women as bitches, soror sluts to be peed on, and discussing getting girls drunk to have sex with them. Tinder co-founders Sean Rad and Justin Mateen have both been involved in a sexual harassment suit, wherein Mateen was accused of severely and repeatedly harassing the former vice president of marketing, who claimed that he sent her harassing sexist messages, calling her a slut, a gold digger, and a whore. As founders and CEOs, these men's sexist outlooks become ingrained in the infrastructure of the social media sites they've created, normalizing the existence and distribution of misogynistic content on the internet. According to Oliver, creep shots are photographs of women's bodies taken without their consent and posted on social media sites like Tumblr and Reddit. The creep shot is valued because it is not posed. The lack of consent involved is essential to a man who enjoys creep shots. In this way, not posing becomes a form of posing for the male gaze. Additionally, some young men distribute video recordings and still photographs of party rape victims that feature close-ups of body parts for entertainment through social media and instant messaging sites. 
Creep shots and video recordings of party rape victims take female passivity to the extreme of unconsciousness and immobility, where the only agents in the images and in reality are the men doing whatever they want to women, controlling them not just through images, but also through actions. Social media norms, much like cinematic norms, continue to enforce the male gaze in women's lives. This gaze is so ingrained in each and every one of us that Oliver claims that we, as women and girls, have been conditioned to cater to men by posting selfies on social media sites mimicking the poses we've come to associate with those desired by the male gaze. Since white heterosexual men established the norms of the film industry and largely had control over it for a long time, the white heterosexual male gaze was able to establish itself in the entertainment industry as somewhat of a cultural hegemony. Unfortunately, a similar process happened in the social media industry.